wer ist denn an der Spitze? Was, was steht denn da ganz oben? Also an der Spitze der irdischen Hierarchie ist über dem, dem Großdruidenrat, ähm, das so, na, da gibt es unterschiedliche Aussagen, aber die überschneiden sich teilweise, äh, das Rothschild-Tribunal äh, und die Jesuiten äh, mit dem schwarzen Papst als oberstem General der Jesuiten, das war lange Zeit der Peter Hans Kolvenbach, Spitzname Le Marvelous, also der Bösartige, äh, ist von äh, jetzt jemand anders abge äh, abgelöst worden, der aber auch schon seinen Rücktritt äh, angekündigt hat. Normalerweise äh, ist, ist man äh, schwarzer Papst auf Lebenszeit. And then, of course, there are plans to create a mock alien invasion. Now, I have since come to believe that the extraterrestrial portion of all of this is nonsense, but that the technology is real, is real. I believe that many of us were shown these documents over the years so that later we would talk about it. I mean, how can you keep the existence of extraterrestrials, if they were real, a secret? And how could anyone keep quiet knowing that they had seen documentation, official government documents labeled top secret, that expressed that these extraterrestrials were real and had visited this earth. I wanted to know just how true all of this was and I began a program of research to find out if extraterrestrials were real. What I discovered was amazing. What I discovered, ladies and gentlemen, is that there has been a plan in existence since about 1917 and probably before that, to create an artificial extraterrestrial threat to this Earth in order to create a one-world totalitarian socialist government. Experiments have been proposed to test the credibility of an out-of-our-world invasion threat. And it continues on another page. Nevertheless, an effective political substitute for war would require alternate enemies some of which might seem equally far-fetched in the context of the current war system. It may be, for instance, that gross pollution of the environment can eventually replace the possibility of mass destruction by nuclear weapons as the principal substitute for war. The United States government has flying saucers. He considered that the beings that were co-piloting these flying saucers were aliens. And he took a second look and realized they were, were demons. I could go on. The bottom line is, is I have concluded that there are no good aliens. The aliens are demons. And we've got um, a, a mixture going on of demons and, and flesh and blood. And we've also got other genetic experiments. Der innere Okkultismus lehrte, dass UFOs Lichtengel sind, also Dämonen, durch die die Welt dahin irregeführt werden soll, dass sie glaubt, wir würden später einer Invasion aus dem Weltraum gegenüberstehen, wenn man bedenkt, dass sie ahnen, dass sie eines Tages tatsächlich einer Invasion aus dem Weltraum gegenüberstehen werden und sie glauben wirklich, dass sie diese Invasion besiegen können. Tja, wie viele von euch wissen, von welcher Invasion ich spreche? Vatican has long been associated with extraterrestrial phenomena, even though they have executed believers of alien life for heresy. But no connection has been greater than the Vatican's involvement in some of the largest mass UFO sightings in history. On October 13th, 1917, in Fatima, Portugal, a mass UFO sighting with more than 70,000 witnesses took place. During the event, The rain stopped. Some witnesses believed that the clouds parted and what was described as a saucer-shaped craft came down from the heavens above towards Earth. According to eyewitnesses, three children approached the vision and witnessed an apparition of a beautiful woman. 
The vision reportedly included a glowing globe-shaped vehicle showering rose petals that disappeared upon hitting the ground. According to the girls, the apparition gave them a cryptic message. Cardinal Siapi, papal theologian of Pope Pius XII, said about the third secret, quote, In the third secret it is foretold, among other things, that the great apostasy in the church will begin at the top. At the University of Vienna on September 10, 1984, the one-time Bishop of Fatima, Bishop Cosme do Admiral, gave the following answer to a question about the third secret, quote, Its content concerns only our faith. Father Gomer de Pau attended Vatican Council II as an advisor. He was given a copy of what was claimed to be the text of the third secret. He said the copy of the third secret he read contained a future prediction by the Blessed Virgin of an almost unbelievable apostasy in the Church. Secret of Fatima, which tells us that, according to Cardinal uh, Chappi, who was, was a papal theologian for five successive popes, said, in the third secret is foretold, among other things, that the great apostasy in the Church starts at the top! Just a couple of things I want to quickly read. One from a friend in Australia, Father, yes. uh, who says, I had a Jesuit priest tell me more of the third secret of Fatima years ago in Perth. Uh, he said, among other things, the last pope would be under control of Satan. Satan will gain power even in the highest echelons of the church. End quote. The strongest statement of this kind came from a caller on the Art Bell Show who said an old Jesuit had told him, quote, the last pope will be under the control of Satan. Malachy was a reforming Catholic prelate born in Armagh in 1094. On a visit to Rome, he was struck by a vision. Before him appeared a series of Latin phrases identifying the 111 popes who would rule the Catholic Church until the end of time. He uttered 111 Latin mottos, which are supposed to represent the nature, the name or destiny or the coat of arms of every pope until Judgment Day. Many of the phrases are considered too precise to be the results of chance. John the 23rd, the 107th Pope in the prophecy, is referred to as Pastor et Nortam, priest and sailor. Before becoming Pope in 1958, he was the Patriarch of Venice. Paul VI is Flos Floram, flower among flowers. His coat of arms is a lily among lilies. John Paul II, who is called De Labor Solis in the prophecies, which means the sun's eclipse, the sun's labor. He is the only pontiff on the list that was born on an eclipse and later entombed during an eclipse. And the 111th, the final pope in the prophecy? De Gloria Olive, from the glory of the olive. That's the current Benedict XVI. At the end of the list, Malachi is said to have uttered a final doom-laden phrase, this one unnumbered. During the final persecution, the seat of the Holy Roman Church will be occupied by Peter the Roman, who will feed the sheep in many tribulations, after which the seven-hilled city will be destroyed and the terrible judge will judge his people. The end. Is Malachi describing the end of the Catholic Church or the end of the world? Jorge Mario Bergoglio. Welcher Charakter, welche Werte, welche Eigenschaften verbergen sich hinter diesem Gesicht? Mit italienischen Wurzeln in Buenos Aires geboren und aufgewachsen, trat er früh in den Jesuitenorden ein und ließ sich mit 23 zum Priester weihen. Während der argentinischen Militärdiktatur stand Bergoglio an der Spitze des Jesuitenordens in seinem Land. The cross shows us a different way of measuring success. Ours is to plant the seeds. God sees to the fruits of our labors. And if at times our efforts 
and works seem to fail and not produce fruit. We need to remember that we are followers of Jesus Christ and his life, humanly speaking, ended in failure, the failure of the cross. However, as reported in the Catholic News Service on June 25, 2014, Pope Francis stated to a public audience his most outrageous and satanic statement yet. He said, quote, It is dangerous for anyone to believe that he or she can have a personal, direct, and immediate relationship with Jesus Christ, end quote. Without question, this directly opposes the New Testament and what all of its born-again writers emphatically teach and instruct every person to do. Namely, to accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior and to know Jesus in an immediate and personal relationship. E della meditazione della Chiesa. Sono tentazioni pericolose, sono tentazioni dannose, sono, come diceva il grande Paolo VI, dicotomie assurde. Flama seius, lucifer matutinus in Lucifer, qui nescit o casum, Christus filius tuus, qui regressus ab inferis, humano generis serenus iluxit, et tecum vivit et regnat in secula seculorum. We don't know whether the last pope's going to turn out to be a person on our short list, but whoever he is, there's some intrigue surrounding how he might accommodate the newly celebrated astrotheology of Rome's top astronomers and theologians that we investigate in the second book. Um, but part of this has to do with signs from the heavens. We devote entire sections in this book to pointing out how the Bible describes the false prophet. Some people believe that Petrus Romanus, they, some people believe that the very next prophet or uh, pope is going to be the false prophet of biblical fame. And I'm not just talking about evangelicals. There are Catholics who believe this, and there are, there are Catholic academics who have written about it for a long time. So we go into all that. But here's the point. The false prophet and the Antichrist uh, in the Bible have allegiances and endowments that are not of this earth, including the fact that both of them can call fire down from out of the heavens, uh, which, of course, is suspect suspected to be the host location of those uh, aliens. What The first thing that went through my mind when lightning uh, struck 
uh, February 11th. Uh, now, uh, now we're just talking. What is again? One week ago. This is very recent. Yeah. Struck St. Peter's Basilica twice immediately following the resignation of Pope Benedict. This whole thing, the very first verse that went through my mind had to do with how they have power to call fire down from out uh, of heaven. Hmm. Now, the, uh, um, it was also two lightning bolts, which numer you know, numerically corresponds very well with the false prophet uh, and the Antichrist. It comes when astronomers expect to see a highly visible comet, which may even appear during the conclave, announcing a new pope. Some most notably Malachi Martin, who spoke out about the secret. Interestingly enough, Martin was murdered less than one year before the third secret of Fatima was finally released by the Vatican. Oddly, the Vatican's version of the third secret was nothing like the way Malachi Martin described it. The Vatican's text indicated that the Pope would be the target of an assassination attempt, but Martin said there was much more to the third secret including several chastisements, or judgments, as well as the unveiling of something in the sky. Something would come into clear view, into clear sight, and it would be in the heavens. Martin said in interviews with Art Bell that everybody on Earth would see this object. He also confirmed that the Jesuits at Mount Graham Observatory in Arizona are tracking the approach of something that would arrive after the start of the new millennium. Malachi Martin gave his series of interviews with Art Bell from 1996 to his last interview in 1998. Something was in the sky in 1938, and Hitler saw it. When he saw it, he allegedly said, quote, now we will shed blood. Martin said the sign in the sky was told to Lucia Santos at Fatima. This was the sign that would precede World War II. Adolf Hitler saw this sign. It prompted him to declare that the violence would begin. Is there a sign in the heavens that will precede World War III? Is this the third secret told to Lucia Santos? Some believe the next pope will be the last in this particular era. Time will tell. In quote. So here you have a you know a very popular Catholic website, and his writer is uh, saying that this could be the last pope, the fulfillment of Petrus Romanus, and that this comet is a sign, uh, uh, and further that a papal decree heralding a major change in dogma is coming. Well, I can tell you, though I can't yet let the cat out of the bag, uh, our book, Exo Vaticana, is about that very subject, a, a coming papal decree that is going to, well, let me just put it this way. It's not only going to say that belief in extraterrestrials is okay for Catholics, what it's really going to say is that denying the reality of extraterrestrials is akin to heresy uh -huh. be because it limits God's creative ability. And what the, what the Jesuits and members of Opus Dei have written in, in the form of official uh, church theology, brand new doctrinal papers that have been written, which we're publishing, I think is absolutely, Henrik, it's going to shock the world because... They evidently know something that the rest of us don't know that seems to be pointing to a very imminent uh, official disclosure moment that somehow, some way is going to need for the Vatican, the largest Christian organization in the world, to tell everybody that it's okay and these are our space brothers. And not only are they our space brothers, they're closer to God than we are and they've come to show us the way. <laughs> Very interesting. I, and as I'm as I'm reading this, the prophecy of the Zohar, given by Jews hundreds of years, separate from the divination of the last pope, um, they, they so you have the prophecy of the last popes talking about who potentially could be the false prophet, where um, the prophecy in the Zohar talking about coming of the Antichrist, uh, but it but both of them talk about the reign of that period of time ending in the destruction of Rome. Uh, here's what the prophecy of the Pope says, the city of seven hills will be destroyed, and the terrible and fearsome judge 
will judge his people. But when you look in the Zohar, here's what it says. In the year 5773, the kings of the world will assemble in the great city of Rome. Now, let me, let me stop here for just a second and insert this. The only time that we know that all of the, the representatives of the nations of the world, the kings of the earth, the only time they would send representatives to Rome from all over the world would be during a conclave. Yeah, exactly. I, I know of no other time where all of the most powerful nations on earth will be, would be sending their ambassadors or representatives to the Vatican than during a conclave. So let me go back to the prophecy. The kings of the world will assemble in the great city of Rome, and the Holy One will shower on them fire and hail and meteoric stones until they are destroyed, with the exception of those who will not yet have arrived there End quote. Hmm. So first of all, a 700-year-old uh, Jewish prophecy in the Zohar telling us that about the time the Messiah is going to appear, the, the nations of the world are going to gather in Rome, and the only ones of those representatives that aren't going to be destroyed when the city is destroyed uh, are those who were en route to get there and hadn't yet arrived. So this sounds like it's right at the very beginning of a conclave. People are assembling, they haven't got there. Uh, now, then it goes on to say, uh, these will commence, uh, excuse me, um, not all the kings will be destroyed. These will commence anew to make uh, war. But from that time, the Messiah will begin to declare himself. And around him, there will be gathered many nations and many hosts from the uttermost parts of the earth, end quote. So they're, they're gathering in Rome. Something happens. Meteoric stones, fiery objects, as it's translated, uh, fall from the heavens to destroy the city. This leads to war. <laughs> the the nations that are surviving or they're reacting to something. This is what's caused some Catholic mystics uh, to speculate that this is going to be a terrorist attack on the Vatican during conclave because you get these fiery objects falling that then causes a response from powerful nations throughout the world, including probably the United States. Uh, responding to that terrorist attack upon Rome, but this is going to be the catalyst, according to this Jewish prophecy, that gives birth to the appearance of the Messiah, who we would call the Antichrist. So what's amazing is when you take this 900-year-old Catholic prophecy, this 700-year-old Jewish prophecy, and just combine it with evangelical and Christian eschatology, it's an amazing glove fit around some terrible event that then causes World War III, but which then also causes the formation of the most powerful nations of the world coming together under global government, which then could present this personality, the Antichrist and the false prophet, the leader of the uh, religious communities of the world, yeah. uh, to give their devotion to the appearance. So wie laut Offenbarung 14, Vers 8, die Hure Babylon vernichtet wird, die große außerirdische Stadt des Himmels. Doch wer wird die Hure Babylon vernichten? Es ist nicht Jaschua, der Messias, Jesus Christus, der dies tun wird, sondern es wird laut Bibel der Antichrist und seine Verbündeten sein. So lesen wir in Offenbarung 17, Vers 16. Und die zehn Hörner, also Könige oder Nationen, die du auf dem Tier, dem Antichristen, gesehen hast, diese werden die Hure, nämlich die Hure Babylon, hassen und sie verwüsten und entblößen und sie mit Feuer verbrennen. Wer nach der Vernichtung der Hure Babylon meint, dass jetzt alles überstanden sei, der täuscht sich gewaltig. Denn nun betritt der Antichrist die Bühne der Endzeitprophetie. Zehn verbündete Nationen des Antichristen werden gemeinsam die Hure Babylon vernichten, damit der Antichrist sozusagen als Held dastehen kann, der die Welt vor dieser bösen Stadt befreit hat. Und dadurch erhält Satan und der Antichrist genau das, was sie wollen, nämlich Anbetung. Einige Prophetieausleger gehen davon aus, dass der Antichrist von Satan selbst besessen sein wird, weswegen beide angebetet werden, der Satan und der Antichrist. Der ehemalige Satanist Henry Markov schrieb dazu folgendes. Das Ziel der Satanisten ist es schließlich, einen Menschen zu perfektionieren, der im vollständigen Besitz von einem sehr hohen Dämon stehen kann. Diese Person kann auch heute existieren und er wird der Antichrist sein. Und dass die Todeswunde geheilt wurde, könnte sich darauf beziehen, dass der Antichrist von den Toten auferstehen wird, genauso wie der wahre Messias vor 2000 Jahren. In den dreieinhalb Jahren seiner Herrschaft wird der Antichrist außerdem folgendes tun. 
Der Prophet Daniel prophezeite in Kapitel 7, Vers 25, und er, der Antichrist, wird freche Reden gegen den Höchsten führen und die Heiligen des Allerhöchsten auftreiben, und er wird danach trachten, Zeiten und Gesetz zu ändern. Und dann wird der Gesetzlose geoffenbart werden, den der Herr verzehren und den er durch die Erscheinung seiner Wiederkunft beseitigen wird, ihn, dessen Kommen, aufgrund der Wirkung des Satans erfolgt und der Entfaltung aller betrügerischen Kräfte, Zeichen und Wunder und aller Verführung der Ungerechtigkeit bei denen, die verloren gehen. Da der Antichrist gegen das Gesetz Gottes rebelliert, also gegen die Tora, was viele Christen heute übrigens auch tun, wird der Antichrist auch als der Gesetzlose bezeichnet. Doch warum werden manche Menschen diesen betrügerischen Kräften sowie den Zeichen und Wundern des Antichristen glauben? Nun, die Antwort finden wir direkt im nächsten Vers, denn dies geschieht, weil sie die Liebe zur Wahrheit nicht angenommen haben, durch die sie hätten gerettet werden können. Darum wird ihnen Gott eine wirksame Kraft der Verführung senden, so dass sie der Lüge glauben, damit alle gerichtet werden, die der Wahrheit nicht geglaubt haben, sondern wohlgefallen hatten an der Ungerechtigkeit. Darum ist es wichtig, dass wir die Wahrheit erkennen und das wahr ist und bleibt in alle Ewigkeit, Jeschua der Messias, der Sohn Gottes und König der Könige. Third secret of Fatima portended a natural disaster that would affect the entire planet. I think that Our Lady's sign is going to appear in the skies soon, not late. I think it's going to come as a shock to everybody. It's going to alert everybody that there is a God and that they are a great available as the French say that they are responsible to him. It won't convert anybody. It'll confirm those with faith. It may help those who are quavering in their faith. It won't give anybody any faith. It'll just show him where he or she is in God's sight. But it won't make them believe. The timetable that you are aware of that cannot speak uh, but cannot speak of that we can read between lines on? Uh, yes and no. There is a... It is not 200 years away. It is not 50 years away. It is not 20 years away. Number one. Well, that's... And number two, it involves the entire world system. It concerns the arrival of a final chastisement of punishment from God to purify men and women and uh, prepare the, them for entry into heaven. Not rapture-like, uh, according to uh, the normal for one uh, evangelical theory, but actually the end of the world. It's not exactly around the corner art. It's at the time when a figure called the Antichrist is abroad and it's a very complicated issue the whole thing but the actual danger itself during those three days of total darkness over the earth the dimming of the sun completely and no light uh, it's a time when the last efforts of the demons to run our lives and to uh, say to rescue take souls away from the salvation that Christ has worked out